From buyer to builder, how the KF-21 deal could make the Philippines an aerospace player. When defense deals are discussed, the focus usually falls on which platform a military will buy, a fighter, a frigate, a radar. But in a sharp shift that could reshape the Philippines' strategic posture, Manila is negotiating to do more than buy, it wants to build. At the center of that effort is South Korea's KF-21 Boramae fighter. If local assembly, maintenance, and production rights are secured, the KF-21 would not just strengthen the Philippine Air Force's combat capability, it would seed a nascent domestic aerospace industry capable of sustaining and modernizing the country's air power for decades. Learning from Indonesia's early bet Indonesia was an early partner in the KF-21 development program and accepted the risks of funding research and development in exchange for technology transfer and expected local production. Jakarta's commitment, conceived when the KF-21 was still a developmental jet, came with a massive financial and technical burden. Payment delays, program slowdowns and political friction have since clouded plans for a wide-ranging local assembly line. The Philippines appears to be taking a different course. Rather than entering at the earliest, riskiest phase, Manila is negotiating to join at a later stage after major design, testing, and validation milestones have been achieved. That changes the risk equation, by entering once the jet's baseline capabilities are proven, the Philippines would avoid the heavy R&D burden while still accessing industrial benefits such as assembly rights and long-term sustainment work. What the KF-21 brings to the table The KF-21 Borame, the name roughly translating to Hawk, represents South Korea's leap into advanced combat aviation. The twin-engine, stealth-optimized design features an active electronically scanned array, AESA, radar, integrated sensor fusion, and a flexible payload architecture for both air-to-air -air and air-to-surface missions. It is intended to close the capability gap for nations that need near-fifth-generation performance without the astronomical costs of the most elite stealth fighters. This is not just a fighter purchase. It's a potential industrial partnership that could change how the Philippines builds and sustains air power. Price, variance, and an upgrade path. One of the KF-21's selling points is cost competitiveness. Compared with some Western options, the KF-21 is priced to be more affordable, a crucial factor for developing Air Force's balancing capability requirements and constrained budgets. Importantly for Manila, the KF-21 program envisions incremental block upgrades. A Block 1 optimized for air superiority roles is moving toward mass production, later Block 2 variants are slated to add long-range strike and more advanced electronic warfare packages. That means an operator could begin with a Block 1 baseline and upgrade via software and modular hardware changes, a pathway well suited to a country building local maintenance and upgrade capacity. A strategy built around industrial participation. According to sources familiar with the talks, Korean industry is reportedly open to direct investment in the Philippines, an assembly line, a maintenance, repair and overhaul, center, and training programs for pilots and technicians jointly run with the Republic of Korea Air Force. Such facilities could be sited near Clark Air Base or within Luzon's industrial corridors, locations that combine existing aviation infrastructure with logistical access. Key facts at a glance. Program entry point, later stage industrial participation rather than R&D funding. Economic benefits, local jobs, technology transfer, MRO revenue from regional customers. Strategic advantage, greater sustainment independence and faster upgrade cycles. Economic multipliers, not just a defense purchase. Beyond the direct cost of aircraft, the long-term economic argument is compelling. An assembly and MRO facility could serve not only the Philippine Air Force but also nearby operators of Korean-built platforms. Annual maintenance contracts, parts manufacturing, and subcontracted avionics work could feed into an expanding domestic supply chain. Over a decade, the Philippines could grow an ecosystem that supports component manufacturing, avionics housings, and possibly licensed production of training systems and drones.
The ripple effects would also touch universities and vocational programs, which could align curricula to produce the next generation of aerospace engineers and technicians, a critical factor if Manila aims to move from simple sustainment to actual system upgrades and localized modernization. Strategic Importance in the West Philippine Sea Tensions in the West Philippine Sea add urgency to Manila's desire for credible air deterrence. The Philippine Air Force's existing F-A-50 trainers-slash-light fighters lack the range, payload and sensors needed to project sustained power across the country's expansive exclusive economic zone. A twin-engine KF-21 with larger fuel capacity, enhanced sensors, and beyond visual range missile capability would give the Philippines a more credible posture for patrolling and deterring incursions over maritime domains. Political and Diplomatic Dimensions Putting industrial skin in the game deepens Manila, sold ties in a way that goes beyond transfers of platforms. An investment in Philippine production capability would bind Korean defense industry growth to Philippine stability and create a long-term partnership similar to historical industrial collaborations between allies elsewhere. It would also signal to other partners, including Washington and Tokyo, that Manila is serious about developing an indigenous industrial base and sustaining long-term military capability. Costs, Trade-offs, and the Path Ahead Any deal of this nature requires careful scrutiny. Unit price, long-term sustainment costs, the scale of local content, intellectual property terms and export controls will all matter. Manila's negotiating position, joining at the manufacturing stage rather than funding early development, reduces some risks but still requires firm commitments on technology transfer, workforce development and economic guarantees. From a fiscal perspective, the upfront bill for a first batch of fighters would be significant, but proponents argue the savings versus some Western alternatives, together with anticipated industrial returns, make the investment defensible. For defenders of the plan, the critical measure is whether an assembly and moral hub can be built in a way that delivers genuine local capability rather than a shallow, temporary industrial footprint. What success would look like? In the optimistic scenario, assembly begins in the late 2020s and the first Philippine-built KF-21s roll out by 2030. Local engineers and technicians would be trained to perform routine and heavy maintenance, and the country would host regional and rural business from other operators of Korean aircraft. Over time, Manila could incrementally build domestic capacity to perform avionics upgrades, develop licensed subsystems and contribute parts to regional supply chains. That outcome would mark a qualitative shift, the Philippines would move from a buyer that relies on foreign sustainment chains to a country with the technical competence to control its aircraft life cycle and tweak systems as national needs evolve. The broader payoff isn't just planes on an airfield, it's the maturity of an industrial base that undergirds national power. For a country long dependent on foreign suppliers for high-end defense systems, the KF-21 opportunity is about national choice. Will the Philippines seize a chance to build lasting industrial capability, and with it, a more resilient means to defend its skies and seas? Pinoy Guard will follow developments closely. If the negotiations yield a firm industrial partnership, the first KF-21 bearing a Philippine roundel will be more than a piece of hardware, it will be a symbol that a new chapter in Filipino air power has begun.